So last time we looked at some of the laws of the Rambam on how to do chuba, right? Like, what does it mean? What goes into it? We saw some of the, like some of the actual meticulousness that actually has to go into it. Um, but this time I wanna do something slightly different. And I wanna invite us to talk about like what gets in the way, like what, what gets in the way of chuba. Cause we could study the Rambam forever who might tell us what, to do or how to do it, or these are the steps, or this is the depth in which we need to be thinking, and here's where our heart needs to be. We could study that forever, and it's kind of an intellectual endeavor, at least it can be, it can stay in that world, right? So, um, so what gets in the way of tshuva, of us actually doing the things? Lynn, you look mischievous. What are you, what are you, what are you? <laughs> Hi, Mel. So what do you think? What gets in the way? Life. Your pride, your Life pride. gets in the way of all the things you're supposed to be doing. All right. So Trudy says it's just time, right? It's like time management. I don't make time and life gets in the way. Someone said pride. Who said pride? And that says pride. So share with me a little bit more how my pride gets in the way. It definitely gets in the way. Well, you, you don't really want to think about, you don't always want to examine your faults and when you are trying to make amends it involves examining your faults closely and sometimes that's that's hard you want to think better of yourself so the pride part is that i don't like thinking of myself in terms of the places where i fall short so i'd just rather not yeah, do I it to think of myself as being a better person than i am you know yeah um, yeah, and, my, and, and we self-rationalize all the time to say it's us, right? They really have the problems, but I'm really okay, right? <laughs> like, like we always do that. And, and for me, like, and it depends on our self-image, like, because uh, all of us kind of have a core root of how we understand ourselves. For me, like my core um, part of that, my core is being capable. I might've said that before, right? But I have this need to be capable. Like I have to be, and so anytime that I'm looking at something for me that where I fall short, like necessarily hits like a, a tender spot, right? Because it's exactly where I wasn't capable or where I didn't show up as capable as I could be. Um, so, right. So, um, so look, it could just be pride. Trudy, or I'm asking a question about like we studied the Rambam, the Hilchot Tshuva about how we would do Tshuva. Um, and, and, and that's nice that we could see Kind of some of the steps and the depths one might need to um the efforts one might need to make in order to do chuva um but i'm asking a question about what gets in the way of that right so even once we know it then we still got to do something else and we've heard uh, a question about pride i just don't like looking at the less uh pretty parts of myself and um and then trudy said just time right like i'm actually busy a lot like i'm busy in it and do that work as it as it laid out by the Rambam it actually takes me it actually I can't just frivolously do it I have to dedicate time to it so how do I carve out the time okay that seems like problem solving but it is definitely a challenge um any other thoughts like what gets in the way hi Brad hi Robert nice to see you again yeah Liz hi hi um Repeated failures. So say, say a bit more about that. When you're trying to make up and trying to do teshuva and you so go that, and you go, you know, humbly again and again and, and it doesn't repair. Okay. So thank you. Um, Cause I, 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 um, I, let me make sure I got what you said. So Part of it, so one of the hesitancies perhaps or what gets in the way of doing chuva, I think you said, is I've tried it before. I've actually showed up with a humble heart. A lot and, of times. And it just didn't work. And then the thing is still there, right? The thing is still there. So um, so mm -hmm. remember uh, in the Rambam's um, chuva and his laws of chuva, it says we need to show up with full, like with an open heart three times. After that, it's not ours anymore. Right. So, so, but there is a feeling. I, I thought you were going to say something else, and maybe you were saying this. I don't know. Is um, like what happens when I have real intent to change a behavior or, or change a dynamic in a relationship, 
But somehow every year I just keep repeating the same behavior, even though my thoughts are in, like, you know, they're pure. They're, they're, I really mean to do this thing. And yet I can't break this cycle. Even when I show up with the whole heart, I can't do it. So then do I just keep like, it's like having the same, um, the same, um, uh, let's take this, the same New Year's revolution, resolution every year, right? I'm going to do this thing again, and I mean to do it, and I make my plan, and I have my support system, and then I don't do it. And then how many years in a row am I going to have the same resolution? For some of us, a long time, right? We're going to have a long time, but that can feel like an obstacle. Really? I'm going to do this thing again? Like, really? I'm going to like, really? I'm going to do this again? I think I'm going to get a different outcome, or I'm just tired of it, right? I'm just it's exhausting on some levels. Um, any other thoughts? Like what gets in the way of chuva? Trudy? Fear of rejection when you, if you're trying to make amends with another person. Yeah. And the way the Rambam puts it out there, remember all the power lies in the other person, right? So you have to be vulnerable and they might, and they might reject you. They might not accept your chuva or, or a, 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 honestly, Trudy, if I show up vulnerable, um, which takes an effort inside of me to show up that way, um, Sometimes it doesn't work out. It actually could get worse, right? They could feel worse. They could react. They could react in a in a way that's not what we want, and it could and I could feel hurt in the process, right? So there's something. There's like I don't know about you, but there's an anticip an anticipatory like rejection. What if I get rejected? And even that can stand in the way before I even ever was rejected, right? Yeah, Daniel. Uh, fear of acceptance. So I do. Oh, my what is fear of acceptance? Just the same thing as the fear of re rejection, only backwards. What if I do teshuva and I, I make amends with my friend? He's going to expect better of me coming for, from now on. God bless you. You're I may so not be Jewish. able to keep, keep up with that kind of with that kind You're of. You're so Jewish, Daniel. Like you said, like what would happen if I did teshuva, and then I would actually have to show up better for this person. Like and right now, I don't have to show up, right? So, um, uh, look on a serious level, like can I actually do it? Like right because something happened that caused something happened you know between us and um uh yeah and even right. more so between self and god on a very serious level right we were talking about on friday like what would happen if we stood before a god of justice only and not a god of mercy right what if it was black and white right and and the judge would rule based on did i fall short or not just you know just black and white zeros and one right or wrong right well i did a lot of things that weren't right that would fall into the not so good category and without any mercy like that would that would be terrifying and uh and daniel says like well what happened if i really dedicated myself to make this change but then i gotta live up to that change and i gotta keep doing it over and over and over or this attitude or this whatever right or this uh intentionality towards how i'm gonna live and make choices can i really do that right can i really live up to it it's nice in the moment to feel something and it's something else to make it a habit like to ingrain it that this is what i become yeah i think those are all right um any any other thoughts that you guys are having about kind of what gets in the way yeah hi nick procrastination oh procrastination is that the same thing as trudy's trudy said time my life gets in the way is it the same or is it different for you how you're feeling about it? I, I think it's it's for me it's connected to like just avoiding the issue, you know, like oh okay, I can't I can't get in the right headspace for that right now. I'll do it tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I appreciate you sharing that because I think that's a very real thing for all of us. Procrastination usually, not always, but usually is the thing that we turn to to mask all those other feelings that we just said right like i don't want to be rejected i might not want to be accepted i'm feeling vulnerable i don't know how this is going to work i'm not sure but you know all of that stuff so you just say i don't want to deal with it and you don't deal with it and you push it off and you push it off and you push it off i know nothing about procrastination um uh i have a t-shirt that says uh, i'm the best at doing something tomorrow that should have been done yesterday or something like that or something my daughter stole it so i don't get to wear it anymore but um but i understand and lynn you had your hand up too what were you thinking i think 
Now am I heard? Yes. Yeah, we hear you. Mostly when I think about Teshuvah, I think about things that are not related to other people because I don't think that's where my big problems are. My big problems are between me and a good, a better life, like more social justice. And what the barriers, the major barrier is there is so much to do Teshuvah about for me, not doing enough in the world, not doing this, not doing that, that I lose heart very fast. Oh, so amazing. I appreciate you saying that. Um, if, I, if, I'm, if I'm following you, there's a way in to say, if I'm going to be God's partner in healing the world, right, then there's some obligations upon me to do, show up and to act and to do. And then I look at the broken parts of the world, and that seems overwhelming, how many broken parts there are, like how many things would I actually have to do and there's a way that can turn into like self-flagellation. Look at all the things I haven't done versus here's a place where I can act, right? But I think that balance is real, right? To say, I'm just one person. I'm a small little nothing. What's it going to matter, all right? And then feeling guilty that I thought about myself as a small little nothing, that what's it going to matter, right? I, I, I mean, I know that folks express that to me, right? That, that, that that's uh, kind of one of the things that draws them. Uh, the, that keeps them distant and, and actually engaging with chuva. Um, I mean, one of the good things about chuva, it's a long process. Like God willing, we have a long time to practice it, and you don't got to fix it all like at one at, at one time. Um, what I wanted to share with you today is some teachings on the on the yetzer hatov and the yetzer hara. Um, has everyone heard of those things, the yetzer tov and the yetzer hara? Okay, this is part of my core teaching that I teach our B'nai Mitzvah kids um, um, because we say to them some things that are a little bit silly. Like we say to them, like you're an adult now or something. Well, they're clearly not adults, right? They're, they're, they're not that, but they are also not children. And uh, something happens to them around this age of 12 or 13 that they need to, uh, they're expected to interact with the world different. So one of the things I say to them is, are you going to have a bar mitzvah or a bat mitzvah? And then I tell them, you know, you can't mess up on the bima. Like you, there's no way to get this stuff wrong. You know, like I mess up every week. You just say it right. You just do it again. Just like, it's not, just laugh. It's fine, right? It's fine. Um, but there's one question that you can answer wrong that I will hurt me. It'll hurt me forever. It's my only Jewish guilt, but this is one that I do. And I say, are you going to have a bar mitzvah or a bat mitzvah? And then I say to them, no, you are not going to have one. Because you are it, right? You become this thing. When girls turn 12 years in one day and boys turn 13 years in one day, they become a bar or bat mitzvah, meaning responsible for their actions in a different kind of way. And then I share with them, there's this teaching that we have in our tradition that we are created, that every human being is created with two inclinations or impulses, yetzer. Litzor right? mashu uh, is to create it, right? The, God does this thing, yetzer, yotzer or, right? From the from the morning prayers, when we say Yotzer or Borei Choshek, God fashioned this light and created this darkness. Um, it's some kind of creative activity. So the every human being is created with these two impulses. Um, the tradition says, and when you're a bar about mitzvah age, those things turn on full blast, and then you gotta manage them the rest of your life. Um, so I want to look at some of those texts. Let's see if I can share with you so we can look at some texts. Uh, where is it here? I think this is it. Let me go here. Oh, that is not right. What do you see? You see my Zoom screen? That's no. great. No. Do you see a text that says Chuba and the Yetzers? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yofi, thank you. Um, so look, this the first part, Rambam's four steps of Chuva of repentance we looked at recognize and discontinue an improper action verbally confess this action right giving a, a action in detail you have to say you can't just say sorry i hurt you you have to say on this day at this time i did this thing blah blah uh three you have to regret that action you have to evaluate the negative impact it's made on you and on others and you have to determine not to repeat this thing remember there's more you have to appease them you have to do you have to go around my computer doesn't like me it's just spinning around in a circle i can't move the text let's see oh look it moved all by itself um so here, here, so 
So Trudy, you said you never heard of these yet sayers, right? You never heard of these inclinations? Is that right? Yes. Okay. So I try to briefly summarize what it is. Can you say what I said so I know that we're on the same page? Or say something close to what I said? About the four things? No, about these two inclinations that we're created with. Well, let me read this one and then we'll see. This is from one of my rabbis, Rabbi Ira Stone. Rabbi Ira Stone um, uh, was in Princeton for a really long time. He, um, he took uh, two um, of our great, uh, um, he took the world of Musar. Musar is this idea about how does one develop um, our soul traits? How do we develop the parts of ourselves um, that could show up in the world and manifest goodness and godliness in a certain way? He, he has some basic teachings. He says, one, you are a soul. I know you think you're all kinds of things. And those all might be true, but at your core, you're a soul. And that soul is perfect and holy. And our job is to shine that show soul into the world. And then he says, two, how come we don't do it? Like most of the time, we understand the difference between right and wrong. Um, mo right when, when we have to choose between right and wrong, he would say most often we know kind of what, which way to lean. And it's really annoying when we have to choose between right and right and really terrible when we have to choose between wrong and wrong, right? Like when we have two bads. But most of the time, he's saying, in our, in our everyday life, we know the difference between the good stuff and the bad stuff. And how come we don't choose the good all the time, consistently, always, he says. Why not? Why wouldn't we choose it? And he suggests that maybe we're not broken, right? Maybe we're not broken. Maybe it's just learned. Maybe choosing good listening to the inclination of, uh, uh, of goodness inside of us, maybe it's a skill. You have to practice it like anything else and you grow into it. So there are certain parts of ourselves that are more inclined. Some of us are more patient than others, right? Some of us are naturally more nurturing than others. Um, it doesn't mean that we can't be patient or nurturing. Maybe we just have to bring some intention and, and actually work on it. So he, he, he gives the best definition that I know of these yetzers, of these creative forces inside human beings. So here's what he says. He says, the yetzer hara, usually translated as the evil inclination and combined in rabbinic thought with its counterpoint, the yetzer hato, or the good inclination, right? Those usually show up together. I don't know why my computer is doing this. <laughs> it's not being friendly. Um, I was okay. before. Okay. Yeah, I know. It just did that without me touching it. It just moved. Um, so traditional sources teach us that human beings are created with a yetzer hara and the yetzer hato. Right? So an inclination, which typically is translated as evil inclination and a good inclination. He tells us that without a yetzer hara, the evil one, the bad one, a person would fail to marry. This is not the right text. Uh, take a job or build a house. And in other words, the normal acts of ego gratification, both physically and psychologically depend upon the Yetzer Ra. In this light, I believe it's more accurate to translate the term Yetzer Ra as the inclination to serve the self and therefore translate the term Yetzer Hato as the equally indigenous inclination of human consciousness to serve another. All right. What does he say? Two impulses inside of us. One, impulse is the yetzer hara, which is the impulse for self. And the second impulse is the yetzer hato, which is the impulse to serve. Okay, let's just make, can, can someone play that out? What's an impulse for self? What's an impulse to serve? Mask, it, the things that's going on with the masks, the people who don't want to wear a mask are only thinking of themselves and not thinking of the community, I think. Okay, so we, uh, without even defining if it's good or bad, that's why he doesn't want these, the, the Yetzirah and the Yetzirah Tov have judgment in them. Good and bad are judgmental words, right? They're comparative words. And so um, truly saying that there could be a way in which I understand the mass as is it about service, meaning I'm gonna care for everybody. This is how the arguments are shaped, right? Or yeah. is it about self and whether I want it for me to protect myself or I want to not have it because of freedom or whatever thing people say, right? Um, okay, 
Um, what anybody else? What's an impulse for self and an impulse to serve? Daniel. Uh, how about professional and personal professional ambition? I want to be the best. Blah blah blah. Yeah, you you sound like me. Blah blah blah. Do you want to be uh, like I want to succeed in my career and whatever? I want to be the best at my particular field, right? So I'm going to work hard and 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 uh, there's there's some self in that, right? Right? There's some ego that's driven into that. Um, and maybe you actually want to do good in the thing that you do, but maybe you just want people to think that you're good, right? Or maybe like there's all kinds of ways that the self is gonna show up. Um, uh, all right, does is anyone confused about these two inclinations that the rabbis suggest that all humans are created with? So there is a reason you're saying that I've never I've never heard it described that the Yetzirah was you know in service of the self. I I find that really illuminating and and reassuring because you know it's kind of like well you're supposed to resist the the evil right? You know, the hurrah, but it isn't that simplistic. It, it seems like there is a, a good reason to have, uh, you know, your own feelings, your own desire to be, you know, accomplishing something, not to be alone, to have love, right? To have a family, to have all of these things. This, this doesn't sound like evil to me. You right. Know, and it, 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 this is this is a very different place for me. So yes, and I want I brought you Rob Stone because he's the best that I know explaining these things. Because the evil and the good, I think, are actually unhelpful terms, right? They 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 don't really say much about um, about. Um, I don't think they describe in some detail what re really might be happening inside of us, and I think labeling it good and bad. Uh, taints things because not everything that's on the side of serve like is there a way that I could have the inclination to serve and have that thing be out of whack like it's actually not oh, good. sure when you don't uh, when you don't even consider yourself and you just totally totally right. so, too much so Liz says right if I'm if I'm just doing unbridled giving and I just love and I just love and I just love and I just love and I just care for everybody else's needs and I just give and I just give and I just give what will happen is I'll become a doormat mm -hmm. like right I'm actually a holy being that has to be cared for and I have to make sure that I'm doing it right so like just giving giving and giving like an absence of self is not us that's not a Jewish concept of something healthy right? It's always in balance with something else. So that's why I brought you Rob Stone. And I think that these definitions are much more helpful to say that all of us have an impulse for self and an impulse to serve. And this is what I tell our B'nai Mitzvah kids, that idea that impulse for self, like turns on full blast when you're 13. It's about me and 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 me. And sometimes when you're 49, it turns on full blast, right? It's about me and me and me and me. And then that has to be balanced with Sometimes it has to be about me. Like what happens if my house is on fire? Like run, right? Mm -hmm. exactly. You have to care about yourself enough to run. Like, right, you, you, you would have right. to do that. All right, so let's look with this background of Rob Stone. And so I'm gonna invite us to hear Yetzer HaRa and Yetzer HaTov as the impulse to serve and the impulse for self, okay? Wow. And not, and not good or bad, not That's good or amazing. bad. They're, That's amazing. They just are. I can't move my screen again, so. We'll just wait, I guess, because I can't show you the text that I want to show you in Rashi Raba number nine, something. I can't do it. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Um, all right, let me hold on a second. Let me stop this. Let's see if I can move it without you on it. Yeah, maybe no. we won't see it. Maybe you could just read it to us. Well, I could if it would open, but it won't even open. What am I going to do? Well, so apparently we, we all need to talk about this one more. Everybody uh, needs to weigh in, maybe. I guess. I guess the universe is <laughs> asking know. us to. Is there do some that. Sort, Is there some sort of notification window going on, like uh, a reminder that uh, at ten o'clock you've got a uh, you've got a class or something going on like that? That's you need to kind of stay in front. No, nothing at all. Okay. Just I'm on my personal Mac and not on my work computer. We'll see. Uh, let's see. I can't even share or move or anything. Mm -hmm. Well, what about what Here. about the inclination? 
Yeah, say more. I can pull it up on my phone. I could at least read to you. Oh, that'd be awesome. What, what about the inclination uh, to why am I doing, why am I doing uh, Yetzer Hatov? Am I doing it? Am I doing these things for the mm -hmm. right reason or am I doing it for recognition? And am I doing it uh, so that other people? And because that's a trap that's very easy to fall into. And you, I agree with you 100%, right? So you would say, I think what you're saying is, let's say I'm going to give tzedakah, right? And am I, what's the, what's the, what's driving my motivations inside, right? So is it because I understand that it's my obligation to help mitigate the human condition for the people around me? I can't take all the pain away from people or the insecurity, but I can shift it for some people. And I understand that as a holy act. And that's why I do it, right? That's one thing, right? What, what happens if I want to be known or seen as a philanthropic person? I want to develop a reputation for that, right? And that's what's really driving yeah. me, right? So then exactly. in such a case, that might be this impulse for self that's driving the thing and not the impulse to serve, even though, even though the action could look exactly the same, right? So one of the things that's important is that, um, is, uh, oh, look, it works on my phone just fine. Um, oh, except the Hebrew is not coming up, fantastic uh um why would it why would it um so that that idea about is it about self or serve sometimes you can't define that even by action right we're all an action-based people but sometimes we can't define it because the action will look the same you have to divide yeah it's shaped and defined by what motivates you like what's pushing you to do the thing right what's pushing you to do it yeah. and the only one that can know that is you right Ultimately, at the end of the day, the only one that can know that is you. And that's why tshuva becomes kind of imperative. Because I could look on the outside like a person that's doing all this holy stuff. And then the inside, my yetzes could be way out of whack, right? These impulses could be really coming from less, less healthy and holy spots. Oh, I got a text. Oh, oh my goodness. Hold on. The only, the only way I know how to deal with it is if you catch yourself needing for other people to see you do things like you you sh you should try in all cases if it's if it's possible to do something uh in such a way that others don't even know that you're that you're doing it. well i, right, so I can agree with that to a certain degree but the other piece is is that when you are reaching out to help others and there is a lot of people that need help. Allowing yourself to be seen helping others causes people to look inside themselves and say, look, this person reaches out and helps. So I can right. reach out and help. I can reach so out right. and help. Right, and so that's so, why. So it depends, you know, it's, it depends on where you're coming from. You know, yes. if, you're trying, if you're trying to help, you're trying to help okay and people are going to look you know at you through their eyes of however they see i mean are they judging are they saying oh she's so she thinks she's so much or maybe they're thinking oh i i could do a little more look there's this yeah it depends, right. it depends. So again, but again i want to push us to say that the out the action you won't know right you can't know and liz you're right like like Think about even in the world of philanthropy, right? There are some people that the way that humans work, I need them to be able to say, I gave to that cause because it's going to make their friends feel bad and then they're going to have to give to that cause. You know what I mean? Um, there is a certain uh, guilt. Yes, right? there so, is. Um, and, and, uh, and that can be bad or good too, right? That, too, could be, absolutely. that could be misaligned also. So here we are. Right. We're in Breshit Rabbah. We're in the Midrash Rabbah. You know, in the work days of creation, on the, each of the days, it says it was good. Right, it was not perfect at the end of the day. It was good. It was good, except for when we humans were created, and then it was said, "Very good." 
Very good. So Rabbi Nachman, Bin Bar Shmuel, Bar Nachman, B'Shem Rabbi Shmuel, Bar Nachman. Those are all relatives named Shmuel and Nachman. When you name your kids the same names, that's what you get, right? He says, he may tov, behold, when the Torah says tov, that is the yetzer ha tov. This is the inclination to serve. The mm hine, -hmm. when it says tov me'ot, behold, when the Torah tells us that it's very good, that is the impulse for self. What? Thank you, Liz. The good one is good, right? The one that the one the impulse for uh, service is called tov, and the impulse for self is called very tov, very good, right? Why? I'm meot. Because the yetzer, uh, the inclination for um, self is very good, very good. And then it says, it's maha. That's what it says. It says, what? Like, just like Liz says, it says, can the evil, can this impulse for self be very good? You see that big question mark there? Yeah. The yeah, the Talmud itself is saying, you're crazy, Rav Nachman, Bar Shmuel, Bar Nachman, B'Shem Rav Bar Nachman. You're crazy. You can't teach this. My, my thing froze again. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know what's going on. Um, all right. So he says, I, I, I have the English on my phone, so I'll just do the best I can. So he says, is it true? Like, can it be true? The impulse for self is very good, he, right? Very good. He says, it's extraordinary, this thing. It's wonderful, this thing, the impulse for self. Why? Because without it, no person would build a house. No one would get married. No one would have children. No one would like build a career. No one would do anything. You would not be driven to do a thing if you didn't have this yet there. What's he saying? Why is it very good? Because we desire. Because, I mean, uh, because, because we desire things for ourselves. We desire okay. things for self, right? And okay. that desire, yeah. that yeah. that drive makes you do everything, right? Without that drive, you wouldn't get out of bed, right? You would just say, blah, the world, so what, right? Right? Yeah, Daniel. If all I were to do was just sit around all day and study Torah, not even teaching it to somebody else, but just sit around and, and, and study, yeah, that might be good. No, it's not good. But it's not good. <laughs> Liz just told you no. Sorry, Daniel. That's not good. Yeah. Right. Um, Been there, listen, done that. <laughs> so I, I appreciate Liz's shock to say the impulse for self is imperative. It's imperative. Without it, you're not going to do much at all. Like Lynn, you're not going to be bothered by the injustices in the world. Who cares? Right. Like that impulse for self has to drive it. But if it's the only thing, mm -hmm. then it can get out of whack. Right. So the other one's also good. The other one. Right, it's Tov. Yes, Lynn, I see your hand. Oh, I can't hear you yet. Go for it. Oh, I can't move my text again. It is a wily mute button there, Lynn. I know. It's sunk in my whole life now. Well, we, we can't hear you yet, or I can't hear you at least. I can't hear her either. We'll wait for you whenever you're ready. I'll keep going, and then when you when you find it, you come back to us. Is this on? Now am I unmute, unmuted? Yes, now we can yes. hear you, Lynn. Oh, I am such... It's the yes, Yetzer Hurrah that did that. Made me not yeah. give up. Yeah. Um, oh, what I hope to say was, I think the Yetzer Hurrah is good also because I believe it can be trusted. Uh, say more. It, 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 by the way, it might be the most trustworthy thing you got in your whole life. Like, what do you mean by it's trusted? If it's in my interest, I'm probably going to do it. If it's in your interest, I might give up earlier. So you are going to find some thinkers about how we create just societies that say, you know, we're all the, the folks that say, let's think about the common good, like the common good. And we'll start in the universal and we'll see how that goes. Like, will people make choices for the common good? Um, you will find some of our greatest thinkers say, no, 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 no. You start in self-interest. 
right? You start in self-interest because when it's in my self-interest for my community to be safe and have a low crime rate, I'll work for it. When it's in my self-interest that I want to be able to walk down the street and not see homeless people, I will work for it, right? Um, mm -hmm. There are definitely thinkers that say that. Lynn, I want to say something a little bit deeper. That yeah. drive for self, you can trust it because it's honest, right? It's honest. Like it's unabashedly honest. It might be wily. It might be slippery. It might be sly, but it doesn't lie to you, right? It doesn't lie to you. The one that says, you know, I'm really a kind person and self-rationalizes away all the unkind things that I do. That guy is living in deceit all the time. But the one that's like, you know, really, you should have the thing. Um, that one, that one is honest over and over and over and over again, sometimes in healthy ways and sometimes not. Right. But it doesn't really lie. It, it might manipulate, but it doesn't lie. Right? It doesn't lie. I can't move my text again. Sorry. Um, um, I'll read to you the next one. OK. okay. Uh, and when we can see it, we can see it. It says the Yetzer Hara, this impulse for self is 13 years older than the Yetzer Hatov. OK, you got it. You know, you know, the age 13, right? So right. the Yetzer Hatov. A ra, the impulse for self is 13 years older than the yetzer uh, hatov, the impulse to serve. So while still in the mother's womb, the yetzer ara begins to develop in a person. Then if he uh, begins to violate the Sabbath, nothing stops him. If he wants to commit murder, nothing stops him. If he goes off to any other sin, nothing stops him. If he imagines any crazy thing he could do, nothing will stop him. But 13 years later, the Yetzer Tov is born. And when he violates Shabbat, it rebukes him and says, airhead, literally it means empty one, like sack full of air. That's what it means. Do you know, it says in the Torah, everyone who violates will surely be put to death. And if he wants to commit murder, it says, airhead. Do you know, it says, whoever sheds a man's blood uh, shall be put to death. And if he wants to commit some sexual transgression, it says, airhead, do you do not know that it says in Leviticus, but the adulterer and the adulteress will be put to death? This is a vote to Rebbe Nata, um, an old text. What, what's, what's this one trying to tell me about the Yetzer HaTov and the Yetzer HaRa? Even if you don't like the examples it gives, what's it trying to, what do you hear it trying well, to Well, It's like the, the first time that you actually hear the Hatov is when you're 13 years old. And it's like this big slap in the face. It's like, wait, you know, you can't just go wild. So I don't know if it's true that it's 13 years older. I think it's saying it's got a head start. <laughs> like the Yetzer uh, uh, Hara has got for self has a head start. Why would he say that? Why would the Vota Rabbi Nantan point me, point me back to the womb even to say, how do I know it has a head start? Well, it starts in there. How do I know? Yeah, Daniel. If I were writing the text, I wouldn't take it all the way back to the womb because I have no observation of a of, uh, someone's. Um, um, actions before they start breathing, but a child is just the essence of service of self. A child always wants, give me that thing, myself, do right. that for me. Uh, I'm building myself even in the yeah. womb, right? A, ba a, a baby knows, knows his mother just from, from shoulders to waist and not much else, you know? The, there's a, a child is just the, you know, the essence, you know, uh, uh, David said that, uh, that uh, you know, uh, that he was, uh, uh, that he was in sin from his, from his, from his youth. I mean, uh, Rob, right? Right. Yeah. That, that, that we're sinful from our, from our youth, which is not born, but it's somewhere in our adolescence, actually. Yeah. Nah, right. So like Daniel's saying, just think about the state of a baby, right? A baby is in the state of self. Feed me, change me, I'm cold, change that, that, that. Is it thinking like, I shouldn't cry right now because it would be better for the family if we had some peace and quiet. Does it do that? No, it does not do that, right? It says me, 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 right? And naturally so, we have some other texts that say, like if they didn't have an impulse for self of, um, in utero, it wouldn't even be born. Like, like why would it, like, right? The rabbis are, will sometimes point to, like, even at the risk of the mother, this baby is going to try to make it into the world. Right? It's going to try to make it into the world. So 
I don't think that's the point to know about what babies do or not, right? Um, I don't think they know what babies do or not, but what they do know is that this yet that impulse for self seems to come first. And it seems to have a head start on the in, and the impulse to serve, right? And I think we definitely see that in children as they mature, right? You start to see that they um, come to understand how their actions affect the people around them. They come to understand like the places where they can show up and cause good to happen. Um, they seem to know that. But I do like that it says at 13, the Yetzer Atov tries to, the Yetzer um, uh, uh a tov tries to catch up, right? It's it's trying. The tov is trying to catch up. Yeah. So think about it. it even with our bnei mitzvah kids, right? That we are. I, oh my god, this thing is so annoying. It won't show you the page that I want to show you now, even though I got it to move to the right text. I should probably just. But you're off. such a good. You're but, such a good teacher, uh, Rabbi. But, we we learn so much, even when you just. You're very kind. Uh, you're very kind. What's my core? What's one of my core fears? My core in like wounds. I need to be capable. I mean, yeah. the damn thing needs to work. That's what it means, right? I heard. That's what it means it needs to work. Uh, yeah. Hi. Um, hi, wait, Rabbi. Wait. Hello. Yes, ma'am. But I have a different perspective on that. I okay. see children <clears throat> as really being an extension of their parents' behavior when they are younger. They, the parents are the ones who are really dictating their lives and keeping their lives going. You know, they might say they want to be hungry, but they're not going to be satisfied until their parents feed them or take them or look after them right through. And then I've been seeing this when they turn to bar mitzvah age, 12, 13, they get a much stronger sense of self. Suddenly everything is for them. Now they're talking out against or decisions by their parents. They're, they're much more self-identified. Um, they're obviously also starting to take some responsibility somewhere. No, no, grandma, don't do that, you know, because you shouldn't be doing that where they would never have said that before. So in my perceptions, it's just the opposite way around to what we've been talking about in the discussion. So Lydia, um, I, I'll invite you to think of it not so literal as the rabbis are. I don't think they know about science. The rabbinic science is often not that great, right? Um, 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 but what I hear you saying is, look, it's true that at a time when, they, uh, when they're in their adolescence, when they're younger, right? One, you actually see a, a, them asserting a self a unique character, right? And mm. uh, and a sense of right and wrong that's coming from something that's uh, their understanding of the world. That certainly is shaped by their parents. Like it certainly is a nurture and a nature thing, depending on who the kid is. Um, so what what I, I think the text that we just saw, what I want you to take from it, what I'm inviting you to take from it, is that that the 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 impulse for self simply has a head start. That's it. Right, the impulse to serve and to balance those two worlds, like how do I do what's right for us versus what's right for me, and how do I know when there's the right time to pick which side, right? Because sometimes, sometimes you could be trying to do good, right, and the, and then you're actually hurting self by doing it, right? Because you're not making, you're not choosing on the right side. But how do we, how do we dance between those two worlds? I think all that text is meant to say is that the Yetzer Ra has a head start. That's all, right? And I think we do have to grow into balancing these two worlds. Um, and you're right to say, uh, you know, not every bar, mit bar bat mitzvah is the same. You know, some of them come and they're light years ahead of other kids who are just still really children, like, right? They're still really functioning that just because that's how they are, right? That's just how, where they are on their journey. Um, so all I want you to hear from that text is don't take it literal. I, I think it ruins it if we take it literal, but that, that the Yetzirah is a head start. That's all. Our impulse for self is usually a little bit ahead of our impulse to serve, usually, right? Um, and, and I want to say that the rabbis are saying that's natural. Like, that's how it works. That's how the world works, right? That's how the world works. Um, I would love to show you a text, but I can't. Um, so, so I'll read you one. I'll read you one. Um, uh, Lydia, I, I appreciate you sharing that. Oh. Um, do you see my text or do I see my text? No, no. J just me? Yep. Yeah, Rabbi. go ahead. Who's talking? Trudy. 
Trudy, hi. Hi. All four of my grandchildren were required for their bar mitzvahs and bat mitzvahs to do community service. And mm -hmm. I think that was a great way for them. They had to do something in the community. And I think that got them started in thinking of, of doing things for others. I think that was an important part. And my grandson at his high school had to do community service to graduate. Yeah. Um, look, my, um, I think, I think, I think for many kids, especially coming to bar and bat mitzvah, um, it can feel like it's all about them, right? And then if you slow them down, they will tell you it's not just about them. It's about them and their parents and their immediate family. It's about them and their parents and their immediate family and extended family. It's about their parents and their friends. It's about these community people. They don't even know who they are, but they're a part of this other thing. They, they will get there if you help them slow down. They know that, right? It's just not top of mind, right? The top of mind is about them. Which is, I think, is exactly what the that one text is trying to show us. That it, like yeah. the sense that says I come first is not bad. It's very good, right? By the way, it's very good. That's the one that's Tov Meod when when applied properly. Um, and and truly, I think what you're saying is how do we nurture it? How do we help it grow? How do we build right. things in that 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 like does slow them down right helps highlight and lift up things of value i can't show you the text i'm very sorry but i'm going to read to you Sichot Aran. Um, this is a text by the chazon ish rabbi avraham yeshayo karlitz it, he has a book called emuna ubitachon and he wants to talk about this impulse for self and why it might get in the way of tshuva Right? Why, why might this impulse for self get in the way? And he says that this Yetzirahara is compared to a person who weaves his way among human beings. His fists shut tight. And nobody knows what's inside his closed hand as he approaches each individual and asks deceptively, what am I holding? And each person perceives him to be holding exactly that which he or she most des needs or desires. So everyone runs after him because each one is convinced that this was the very thing they wanted. And yet eventually he opens his fist and there's nothing in it at all. So the Yetzirah is deceptive in this very way. It taunts us. Each person with his or her own particular nonsense, he says, and desire into thinking that it has in its closed fist the exact thing that I want and I need. And when it ultimately opens its hands, we find out that there's nothing there but an empty palm, for we can never truly fulfill these desires. Um, I'm not so worried about his description of um, your deepest desires and that things, but kind of the nature of how he's describing it as uh, a person that weaves among human beings with the mysterious package that's decorated or, or uh, wrapped just like you like it, with the colors that like are exactly the ones that you love, that has ribbons on it exactly the way that you would put them on, right? That says, what's in my hand? What do you think is behind door number two? What do you think is back there? So what, what's he saying about the nature of this impulse for self? I would love to show it to you, but I don't know. I can't look at all I can do is show you this screen. Oh, do you see a screen? Yes. Yeah. Holy kaboli. Oh, but I can't move it. Sorry. That's the text. That's the Hebrew text. Um, oh, I don't know what's going on. So what, what, what do you hear and what he's saying about this, this, this impulse for self is a little bit ahead of the impulse to serve and the impulse for self he's saying is weaves its way among persons with with something mysterious that you really want. Hi, Daniel. It's customized. It's, yeah. It, it, what I want is different from what you want, is different from what Liz wants, is different what, from, from what Trudy wants. And each of us sees in their, in their own Yetzirahara that which they themselves really want. And therefore, and therefore, it's just as tempting for me 
as it is for Liz, as it is for Trudy, as it is for Rabbi Gary, as it is for any, anyone else. And if it's just exactly what, if it's just exactly what I want, it's difficult to resist. It is particularly crafted, Daniel, just for you. It knows every key word. It knows every button to push. It knows exactly how to to to, um, to like shape a thought, a feeling, an argument that will help you say, you know what, I don't really need to do that. You know what? I in fact, it it tweaks it in such a way, often to make you feel that you're doing something moral. You know, like because life is complicated, it's all gray, and I have to choose between this and that. You know, it's probably better if we do this. You know what, I'm not going to do tshuva because I don't want to hurt the other person. And, it, and if I can't be sure 100% that it's not going to work out great for both people, wouldn't it be better to not cause pain? Isn't that what holy people do? Mm. Right? That's what the yetzer does. The yetzer is wily. So yetzer like shows up, oh, look, oh my God, look at this. Hallelujah. Um, um, the answer shows up in this very deceptive way to say, um, with your particular language, with your particular flavor, with your particular coloring, to say, right, you're actually okay, right? You're actually being kind. You're actually being holy. It, it shapes that way. It is, it is, this is the way that it works to say, you don't really need to, you know, you don't, you don't, you don't need to, um, if I would show you one more text, but now I can't. <laughs> um, uh, any questions or comments or concerns about this one? And then I want to show you two other pieces about how this Yetzer shows up in this kind of subtle and nuanced way. Yes, but Lynn. I have, oh. Hold on. Go ahead, Lynn. I'm, I want to point out to you that your excellent way of managing your lack of competence in this immediate area is a great role model for us oh you're not feeling what's happening inside of me <laughs> no i'm telling you you're your, suffering, it. your suffering uh, is worthwhile because it's helping us um, you're doing I, I, it look i appreciate that um I, I i appreciate that look i think I, I, sometimes it helps for us to be honest about where our struggles are right because then um uh, cause we only see ourselves from, I only see myself from my world usually, right? I don't see them from your world. And in my world, the yes, sir will tell me all kinds of things. Like what would, what might it be telling me right now? That, right. Am I be saying, oh, you should have done something. You built up. I can't really control what's happening. I'm trying, but I can't. Right. Um, unfortunately, uh, but it might try to tell me a different story about, you see, you're really not good enough. You see right? You really shouldn't. You see, like, who are you to actually say anything about anything, right? That's how the Yetzer will play uh, on us. Um, can I, I'll, I'll share with you two more texts, and maybe we'll see them would, if my things stop spinning. Oh, hi, Liz. Thing? Yes, yes, can please say, say one, one thing? thing. Okay, so the thing that's just leaping out at, at me from the page about the Yetzer Hara being deceptive mm -hmm. is the picture of the closed fist. Mm -hmm. like this right closed fist a closed fist and i'm thinking of a of a little baby and you, you ever see a little baby that just closes their fist they grab sometimes they grab the mother's hair and they Here close they yeah. close on the mother's hair and the mother's like let go of my hair you know that that kind of closing it's this grip of, oh, I think I want this, but I don't really want that. But then there are, I want to, I want to juxtapose that with the thing when we close ourselves off from others. Okay, we're weaving our way through, but then there's that closing off where we have to do this amazing introspection about things that might make the situation better. And not just for ourselves, but for others. And there is a closing that happens there because it's not, it's not that it's, it's necessarily fake because some individuals in society close themselves off and they build huge things, okay? They come out when they're ready, when it's, 
when it's done or you know there's a connection that's able to be made and and these things are also important but it does come from a closing and then there is a time to be open yeah so anyway. uh, look one of the lynn what lynn was sharing and i appreciate you sharing it is that idea of the closed fist right mm. is it secret right there's a lack of transparency in what's happening so mm. I told you, this is one of my core fears, right? Mm. I mm. told you it, right? Mm. And I lay it on the table. This is what it is. And, and it is something that drives me that I have to work on a lot because it can make me very small and it can make me pull back, Liz, and it can make me feel distant and it can make me say I'm not going to try and it can mm -hmm. make me do all kinds of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. It doesn't make me do anything. It helps me. Like it, it, it actually like seduces you, like lures you mm -hmm. to the side mm -hmm. to say, don't try, don't do this, right? Mm -hmm. um, but when one of the antidotes that uh, to, um, to, and we're gonna see this in a little bit, one of the, an the, the antidotes to the Yetzirah, our, our tradition teaches Torah learning, which is a kind of uh, opening of the heart like a transparent heart. This is where I am. This is what I'm working through. And then it's much harder for the Yetzer to have control, right? Because the Yetzer is always secretive. It always holds it close and says, if you follow, you're going to get that thing you really want, right? So how would I ever get, like, um, I mean, is it true that I really want to feel capable? No, I really want to do stuff. I want to, like, journey with people in a way that uh, helps build important lives and communities for all of us. That's what I really want. But like, but my fear is that I'm gonna suck at it, right? The fear is I'm gonna fail at it. That you're gonna see me as a, like a fraud or whatever. You know all the inner story that goes on. So, but the answer will say what you really want is to be capable. That's what you really want. Mm -hmm. So therefore, like, all these other stuff will come. I do like the closed fist because part of the secretness is what gives the answer power, right? Is it, because only I know and it's inside of me. And if I just checked it against someone else and said, Lynn. You know, I'm worried that I wasn't really showing up the way that I could have today, even mm. with all that. And she would say, no, you were fine. Oh, well, that would kind of blow up the Yetzer real fast, right? Mm. <laughs> we like, say, no, not so much. Mm. Um, I, I, here's two texts, and I can't move the, I got it to here, so you get to see some of it. Um, uh, this one says, um, the Yetzer expresses itself most fundamentally in allowing one's natural life to flow among its natural course. So what is that? Mm. That's good. <laughs> what are you hearing? It is not this weird thing for you. It is not this thing that comes out of some uh, extra special experience. It is not epiphany. It is not like a wow moment. It is in the very nature of how you normally think, how you normally talk, how you normally feel, how, right? It, it finds itself a home in the things that you find the most comfort in. Right. Mm. So it's never going to come from a place that's like way out there. It's always going to come from a place that's very normal to you. Mm. Um, and, and that's kind of where it gets to hide in these shadows. Right. To say that. So this is the Vilna Gaon, um, uh, Elijah of Vilna. And he tells us the following about the Yetzirah. He says the Yetzirah does not try to seduce you to do something that is outright sinful, because in that case, you would never take the bait. Right, the Yetzirah would never say, you know what you should do today? Just go like run someone over with their car. Like you wouldn't do it. Like you would say, no, that's dumb. I'm not gonna do that, right? So um, uh, rather the Yetzirah tries to get you to take only one small step down a wrong road, which can do by convincing you that the first step is actually a good and a righteous one. Mm -hmm. So for example, mm -hmm. the Yetzirah won't try to entice a person who keeps kosher to outright eat pork because that's not likely a po point of vulnerability. Instead, it would try to entice a person to eat roasted kosher meat on Passover, which is not to be done, and would whisper convincingly, um, you'll really enjoy the festive meal so much more. What is that? That's like a weird convoluted thing I just said. Um, he's saying, uh, it wouldn't say to you, if you're a person that's used to keeping kosher, it would never say to you, let's just go have swine, right? Uh, like, because that's too far out there. You're not going to say it. It's going to say, like, let's say there's a holiday like uh, Shavuot where we eat dairy. And it's going to say, you know what? Like, don't do that. Just eat this other thing on that day. Right? It's just going to try to get you a little bit out of the norm, but still within the system. Like any little step. The roasted meat, um, the roasted meat on Passover is, uh, 
uh, you can only eat the roasted meat that comes from the sacrifice. You can't like have a regular barbecue that day. It has to be the Paschal lamb, right? You can't have a regular lamb. So, right? I can't get the Paschal lamb. I'll just eat this lamb. What it means to say is it's gonna it's gonna just move you a tiny bit, right? So the answer is not gonna show up and ask you to do something insane. It's gonna ask you to do something that's very sane for you, something that seems right and normal to you, but may pull you from your ultimate um, ultimate goals. Uh, look at what it's, what could I have in here? What's once the Yetzer ham? Do you think that's a Freudian slip or something? I said Turkey pork ham. before. Turkey ham. It's the Yetzer ham. Once the Yetzer uh, hara succeeded in a small measure, it will continue enticing the person farther and farther down the path of transgression, right? Which means to say we self-rationalize a way that we don't have to do the thing, right? That we can... We, we can do a, a lesser good and not the thing that might be better for us to do. We could show up like this and not like that. We could do that. Um, and then that rolls, it builds on itself and builds on itself and builds on itself. So you might not be, uh, you might not initially take some steps that are like way down the wrong road, but over time, what happens is I end up a little bit lost, right? And that's what Chuva is supposed to do is to realign us and push us back to something more um, core to who we, the kind of person that I want to be, right? The kind of person that I'm called to be. Right? So it just pushes us so to, to, you know, to take this accounting and and not get lost in it. Um, any questions or comments or concerns? And I just have a couple more texts, but so we'll see. We'll see how many sense? we do. Okay. Are are we? I want to make sure I know what we're talking about here. Is this sounds like uh, fences around uh, misquote? Mm. Say more. Right. Oh, well, um, oh, I think you just Brad, described it. But Brad, saying. are you saying that one of the reasons why the rabbis might build fences around the Torah is because we have this yetzer that exactly. like, it, like helps us skirt just a little bit and just a little bit and just exactly. a little bit, right? Yeah, exactly. you, might, you might be right about that. Like all the ways that we self-rationalize and therefore the rabbis try to keep us within these goalposts, you know, these, these um, I kind of think of them as like guideposts. Like they try to keep us in and they know that we have a tendency to smudge the edges a little bit. So they give us extra, extra guideposts. That might be, I mean, that, that certainly makes sense to me if that's how, that's how like some of this could work, right? Because they know us. Well, they really know themselves, right? The rabbis really know themselves and, 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 and uh, what they do. Um, but here's the tricky part though. Like take it out of the world of mitzvahs, right? And to put it into the world of like an honest, authentic accounting of your own soul in relationship to the divine. Like, who am I really? What am I really? How am I showing up really? Mm. Right? Mm. And the guideposts don't always help with that. Not the same way as did I do the mitzvahs right? right? I mean... I, 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 you know me enough already to know that the mitzvot for me have to be in service of this greater good, right? Mm -hmm. This greater call to be a partner with God to like to heal the world, mm -hmm. right? They're not, they're, they're, they don't count up by themselves, right? Um, um, look, our system is old and tested and I think shapes lives of meaning and purpose, but they're just not an end into themselves. And part of the work at Chuva is like, an accounting of who I am, honestly, at my soul and my guts, who am I? How am I showing up? And why am I showing up that way? Um, and then what are the places that, oh, look at that, it moved, I didn't touch it. Amazing. Um, oh, move it quick while you still have a chance. Oh, this is not the right text. This is terrible. This is... I took some of this stuff out and I edited things. And and then they're not they're not showing up with the edits. I don't like it. Um, um, okay. Um, so so yes, I think you're right about the fences around the Torah are because we have this tendency to self rationalize, right? We have to 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 make it okay. Like it's not so bad. It's just this. It's just that. And so rather than get ourselves too far, that they, they help. Um, but part of this saying, work. Yeah. Go ahead. It, and you're saying that 
unfortunately, we can't have fences around all of the things that, that our mind goes through. You cannot, right? I mean, yeah. like one of the things with the Yetzirah, this, right, because it speaks my language in a particular voice that is most compelling to me, um, the way that I work with the Yetzirah is to just face it. Look at it. What happens when I start to make choices that are those little choices that lead me down what they call like a wrong path? Why? Why did I do that? Like, what was really going on inside of me? What was I really trying to accomplish in that moment? Like, was it because I was afraid? Was it because I was, uh, like I told you, that I, that I want to appear capable? So sometimes I'll just uh, compromise myself because I don't want to say I don't know. I don't know, right? Like, what's really going on that pushes me down? A different kind of road and, and that would stand in the way of me um, um, embracing chuba and in the fullness of what it can be um, um, let, let's look here in the in kerushin i still can't make it work so it'll be what it'll be uh, but i don't even have kerushin in my form you have it in yours <laughs> um, here's what i have let's go with what i have this is, uh, here, let me just turn it off because the thing doesn't work. Um, at least I can see your beautiful faces. Um, uh, this is what, this is the next one that I have. Oh, I do have it. I lied to you. This is the Talmud and Kiddushim 34, 30b. Uh, it says, the Holy One, blessed be he, said to Israel, my son, I have created in you the Yetzer Ha-Ra, but I've also created Torah for you, which is the cure. Right. So there what, what's it saying is that, yes, you are you are built with a a uh, on a core level, you're built with an impulse for self. And then we have an amazing tradition that teaches us over and over again to harness, to cultivate, to grow, like to nurture the impulse to serve. And how do we balance those two worlds? Right. How do we balance them? Um, so if that Torah, if that. Talmud and Kedushin is right, then the Torah that we're encountering and teaching and learning over and over and over and over has to be one that's helping us build the impulse to serve, right? Because if not, we can't counteract this impulse for self. So, so uh, I don't know wh who I was talking with the other day or Friday, I don't know, someone. Um, like I, I've become convinced in many ways that one of the roles of Torah is to build empathy. Right? Why do we keep in all of the minority opinions? Why is our tradition insistent that we keep in the person that we didn't follow? Right? Why is it insistent that we listen to the voice that we think is wrong? Right? Why is it insistent that we say, you know, Rabbi so and so and so and so and so and so said this, but we don't do what he said? Why? Right? It's not to, it's not for us to. Um, um, encounter that other person in their wholeness, right? This person really thinks X or Y or Z. So there's a there's an exercise we'll do together, God willing, one day on, on God language, because God language is really hard. Um, but I have this worksheet that has 49 names of God on them. Um, I got to teach this at USD, which is a Jesuit Catholic school with, uh, with the graduate schools of uh, medicine and law and the peace studies and a few other things. About half the people were Jews and half the people were not Jews. And then I gave them this big list of names of God. And I say, I want you to go through and circle three that you like. I want you to X out three that you hate. And I want you to question mark three that you have no idea why they're on this list, right? And then what we'll do is we'll talk through like who will someone share one of the ones they like. And inevitably what will happen is somebody will say, you know what? I really relate to the one that says our father. And then I'll say, does anyone have that one X'd out? And then somebody will be like, yeah, I hate that one. I hate it. And then someone will say, does anyone have that one question mark? And they're like, yeah, what? God's not a father, right? Like whatever they say. And then I just slow them down to say, tell us why that resonates with you. And then you'll start to heal the story that comes out of a real human heart, right? They'll say, oh, that resonates with me because of X and Y and Z. And then I'll say, hey, everybody, do you get it? Like for John, it resonates to him because of that. All right, you person that said you don't like it. Why don't you like it? Oh, do you get it? 
but they said they don't like it because of it's oppressive figure that doesn't blah, 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 blah. Do you get it? It's not about being right. Like which one's right? I have no idea which one's right, right? But if you can hear each other to say that I stand in a prayer space and call God this because I long for something else, right? Then you get to some kind of humanity where we can actually begin to hear each other. But if you just say God, God's real name is X, that's it. This is the one I like. And that's the end of the talk. Well, good luck, right? Like, like, right? We all just stay in our own little world. That the etzer makes us stay in our own little world in this little closed space, closed world where it's just me, and I'm trying to make my way through, and I want to be safe and secure. That's what it wants me to do, right? Um, and, and that's what it pushes us to. So, so again, I think the Torah has to teach this. This one is a brachot. The Talmud in five a says that Revi Levi ben Chama said in the name of Rabbi Shimon Bar ben Lakish. Uh, a person should always yargiz. They should always um, yargiz. They should always yargiz. What's what's lagiz? They should always like stir up, stimulate a lot of action or energy uh, uh, for the impulse for um, service to counteract the impulse for self. As it says, uh, and it's quoting a Bible verse that says, "Wigzu and sin no more." So if we conquer it. Like what would happen if this, the impulse to um, serve actually started to win out over the impulse for self? They say, great, right? All is well and good. But if not, let that person occupy himself with Torah. As it says, commune, take to heart this Torah. Okay, well, what happens if that works? Great, that's great. You should do that. But what happens, but if it doesn't work, you know what you should do? You should really focus on the words of the Shema and make a serious bedtime routine with Shema, right? To say like, hey, you God wrestler person, Shema Yisrael, listen up, you, you, you Jacob turned your name into Israel, God wrestler that has doubts and whatever, know that God is one and God is ours. You should have a routine. Well, if that works, that's great. You should do that, right? And he goes on to say so-and-so and so-and-so, and, so and, so, and it, it should work and it should be great. And he says, and if nothing works, you should just, um reflect upon the day of your death that's all just think like right that this is there's something finite to my whole life and if that maybe that will help you help your impulse for service turn on a bit more maybe right um, um and um yeah so the last text i have two last texts well i have three last texts it's already time so i i want to be mindful i'll share two we have two um, new Oh, yeah. until I, noon. Have, I have until 11 30. oh i i saw it said 11 to noon we could stay till noon we could all I'm just hang out that. all day um I canceled um, my appointments uh, this is rav cook um which i know you've uh, studied with rabbi rose some orota kodesh the um uh the holy lights uh, his book on holy lights the first chief rabbi of the state of israel he he talks about um um, tshuva dwells in our heart and even in the midst of the yetzer even the one that calls us to say uh to that hidden place he says tshuva is even there tshuva is even concealed in this in that dark place and tshuva sends out its influence which becomes revealed afterwards at the time when we repent we say oh that other truth was always there right it was always right next to it so tshuva dwells in the depths of material existence because repentance was created before the creation of the world. And repentance is already prepared to act before we were even born. And nothing in the world is as sure or as secure as tshuva that in the end, right, it can overcome this yetzer hara. Mm -hmm. So he says, if the yetzer hara is built into the fabric of the universe and Torah is the antidote to that yetzer hara he claims that tshuva is built into the fabric of the universe also like it is also part of our dna those two things mm -hmm. um and um, so that we like while the yetzer hara might paint for us a world that looks very true like totally true and right it might do that right um, there is also another truth that's sitting right nearby if we're willing to like, open up ourselves to that thing, right? To resist a bit the Yetzirah. Um, um, 
yeah, any questions or comments or concerns? I want to show you something, but I don't know if I can. I can't. I won't even open. Okay, never mind. I'll stop trying. Um, the world, oh, the world doesn't want me to try. Or maybe it does because it just came up on my screen. Can you hear me or are you just all being quiet? We can hear you. I can hear you. Okay, let's see. Yeah, we can hear. Let's see. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Do you see a text? Uh-huh. Okay. Yes. Um, here, here's, I'll, I'll share a little story about Shuva that um, um, comes from the one of our rabbeim in, in a book called Torah to Vote. He tells a story from the prophet Malachi that says um, where we get part of our language for tshuva. So it says, turn back to me, to shuv, alai, turn back to me and I will turn back to you. So he tells um, a story, a parable of a king whose daughter was taken captive by thieves and stolen far away from the palace. And she despaired this daughter and said, um, if she were to try to return, her footsteps being so small and the distance being so great, when would she ever arrive home? You, you get it? Like she's so far from where she is and, she's, and she doesn't have a horse. She doesn't have an army. She's just one person that's gonna walk really like, you know, cross the whole land to try to get home. And even if I tried, there's no way that I would make it. That's her feeling. So the king sent a message to his daughter and he said, I, I wait for your return. I long for it every day, right? Um, and, but the only way that it's going to work is, um, but as long as you do not, the only way that it will work is when you begin to return and I'm coming towards you. You should know that, right? Right, so you are imagining this distance that's um, unbridgeable, but you're taking little steps and I'm taking big steps. So if you begin to return, if you do this work of chuba, even tiny steps, I will do the same in response and I'll draw nearer with my great power and with my very big and long steps. And we will very quickly be reunited. And this is the sense of the verse saying, turn back to me to shuva light. And even with your limited capacity, even in any small way that you turn back from this yetze, right? That you, that you lean into some deeper truth of yourself, God says, I'll turn back to you with the greatest of compassion, right? It's not that you gotta fix any of it. What you gotta be willing to do is take small steps. And, um, and, and, and that seems to me doable. If this stuff is built into the fabric of humans, right, our DNA, but if it's built into me to have cert, like this impulse for self that comes first and is needed and is called tov meot, right? It's called very good. Um, um, and yet I can feel, I think, um, I think um, Lynn was talking about this earlier, like look how far away it is. Right? Look how far away the king is. I have just these little legs. Like, right? There's so much to do. And I have, I'm just this one little thing. And that can feel impossible that I'm going to be able to make it. And yet our and our, our 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 tradition insists that every little step on my part is meant by a giant step on God's part. Right? That I just need to move a little bit closer. And then that's that thing that seems like it's impossible gets a lot closer, right? Every little one I make makes that thing much more viable, right? I can connect to me in a very different, um, uh, powerful and different way. Th this is a book called, um, um, uh, this is not a book, it's a website. It's, um, hold on, I will remember, I will remember. And if I don't remember, I would look it up, but I can't press the button. Ha, 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 ha. There's a website that actually, uh, helps make change, helps us develop habits. Um, it's a pretty cool site, right? Um, uh, it's called Tiny Habits. Tiny. So, right, to make these little steps back towards the Holy One, 
right? Away from this thing that might deceive us, more back towards something that might be more true inside of us. Um, um, I, I can't even get the site because it's right there on that link, but I can't get it for you and I'm going to tell you the wrong thing, so I'm not going to tell you. Um, I can send it out to you if you write to me. Um, it says, uh, habits are not created out of motivation, right? I want to be a good person. I want to show up and I want to do the right thing. And yet I don't do that all the time, all right? So motivation is always temporary. At this moment, I feel like I could do two birds. At this moment, I feel like I could act different. Daniel says, but then I would have to keep acting different all the time, right? What if I succeeded? Like, and, and what about tomorrow if I don't feel like acting this way and I just feel like it now? Well, he says motivation is always temporary. So we're looking for a way to do our habits, whether we are motivated or not. And Dr. Fogg found that way. So to make a habit stick, we have to start very small, these baby steps back towards, and they slowly increase our habits until you, you are where you want to be. And so we have to start with tiny moves, tiny chuva, little habits. So he says, what is it? One, a behavior you do at least once a day. Two, a behavior that takes you less than 30 seconds to do. And three, a behavior that requires little effort. If you say, I'm gonna change myself and I'm gonna have to become a fundamentally different person. I will never think this way again. You know what? Like having this fear about being capable, that's not healthy for me. I'm just not gonna have it anymore. Guess what will happen? F is nothing, right? Like that thing's still going to turn on and it's still going to drive me. But what could I do instead? I could say, I'm going to create a mantra for myself that I carry in my wallet. And every day I remind myself that there is an ample amount in the universe. There is plenty all around me. And even when I feel like I'm not capable, I will be able to figure it out. Right? I could do that. It'll take me 30 seconds. I don't have to change the whole world. I don't have to stop being me, right? I don't have, like, right? That other thing will not really happen. So he says these primary parts, a cue, a routine, and a reward. A cue, a routine, and a reward. That you need something that cues you to start this habit, a trigger. Then you need to do it. And then you have to experiment with what type of reward works with you. And since a tiny habit is tiny, the reward should be tiny. I can send you the link if you write me afterwards. I'll send you where it is. But it actually helps you build these things. If I wanted to change this, what would I do? What would be something that I could do once a day? If I wanted to show up in the world more wholehearted, if I wanted to be more patient, if I wanted to speak kinder, if I wanted to, I don't know, right? If I wanted to show more gratitude in my daily life, something, that, right? That they'll actually help you create a little ritual. Like, how do you do it? Because sometimes that's the hardest part. If I can't see it and I don't know what it looks like, then I don't know how to do it. But this, this site will help. Um, and then the, the last thing that I just want to share when, when we're thinking about the, wor the world of tshuva is comes from um, Rabbi Heschel that says, should we despair of our being unable to attain perfect purity? Should we do that? And he said, well, we should if perfection is our goal. Uh, however, we're not, uh, we're not obliged to be perfect um, once and for all. We're only, uh, but only... I can't read the text because my because it's hidden from me. You know, some things are hidden, but only to rise again and again beyond the current level of self, which is to say our tradition never asks us for perfection. It asks us for progress. It asks us to try. Right? So a lot of the goals of tshuva aren't the results. They're not. It's the, it's the, you know, it would be lovely if every time I tried to do tshuva in a serious way, I got the results that I wanted. It's, it's to build a habit in a, in a heart that's willing to face the parts where I am not being the human that I want to be or I believe that God called me to be. Um, so some of the stuff we started with that stands in our way, pride, time, procrastination, avoidance, like uh, my past failures at this, like what would happen if I actually did it? What would happen if I was actually honest with God? Will it work, right? Um, that hard work, our tradition says, is built into our very fabric, 
right? The, the, yetzerah, the Yetzirah is built in and drives and speaks a little bit louder and is a little bit more developed than any other part of ourselves. So you're not actually a broken being at all. You are not. You're just a human being, right? Not just, you're a human being. That's a pretty awesome thing to be, right? Uh, you're, you're a human being, which means to say that um, that thing is real. All those voices are real. All those things that say I don't have to do it are real. They're built into us and they're built into our universe. And we have this other other cool part, the Yetzer HaTov, which is supported by Torah and a tradition that says you can balance that thing. You can, right? It's not gonna be smooth. It's not gonna be perfect. It's not, we're gonna get instant success. It's not, we're not gonna get all that, right? But you do have, you're not powerless. You actually have power. And if you want to make a little change, and little changes have like huge results often, like big ripples right afterwards, you can do that too. As long as you're realistic in what you're trying to do, as long as you're willing to lean in and try and fail, but, uh, you might fail, that's okay, as long as you learn, right? Um, as long as you know that perfection is not the goal, that's not the goal, the goal is to try and to learn and to grow. Um, then we're given this gift called tshuva, to try again and again, and to help us like build, like grow self and soul, to build this uh, warehouse of goods in the Yetzer HaTov that help balance that other thing when it turns off, right? That other thing when it turns on. And the cool part is that we can do it, right? Like we can do it. You're not going to change your fundamental self. You're not going to do that. But you can change little bits, which have amazing uh, like uh, results in, in how we are and how we act and how we feel about ourselves and how we're showing up in an authentic way. Um, um, I think that's the gift that Shiva gives us, right? Shiva gives us. So any, any, any questions, any thoughts, any concerns, anything anybody wants to share or ask or anything? Or there's some chats that I have been ignoring. Oh, that Tiny Habits Academy. Daniel, you're the best. You're the best. You're the best. Did it? Did the link work somehow for you, or no? Or you just knew about it? I just did a Google search in, on my phone, and uh, while we were with Doctor Fogg and Tiny Habits. Yeah, you met. You gave me that much, and I and I was able yeah. to find the rest for us. Yeah, and Daniel also reminds us it's Elul, where the king, where a Melech was today, right? The king is in the field, um, so we should take advantage of that. Does that make sense to everyone? The king is in the field. No, be it. I, I'll tell you if it's not. So it's uh, the idea is that most of the time the king is in the palace and you have to go through all of these hoops and bureaucracies and something to go stand and talk to the king. Um, but uh, we have a tradition that says in the month of Elul, the king comes out to the field and anybody can just walk up and talk, right? And uh, it's the month of preparing ourselves to stand before God that we don't have to go through all the normal hoops, right? You just have to be honest. You just have to have an open and honest heart, and then uh, the king's there waiting to hear. So, um, so I'll, I'll, I'll be quiet for a second. Any thoughts, any questions, any comments, any concerns? Must, must go. Yasha Koch, everybody. Yeah, yeah Have a great week. Shavuot Tov. Shavuot Tov, Brad. Robert, I, I saw, I think you said thank you. I was reading lips. Um, and you were reading lips properly. That's exactly what I said. Thank you. I did Wonderful, one. Beautiful. I was capable and, uh, of lip reading. <laughs> yeah. Puts all the pieces of the puzzle together in a more coherent way for us to work on and act on. And so yeah. thank you. It's a blessing. The biggest piece, Robert, really, is the Sietza Ran, the Yetzer Tov, is an impulse for self and an impulse to serve, right? Both are good. Right, right. right. The, que the question is learning how to balance them. You are not bad because you have self interest. That exactly. is not it, right? Exactly. You are not at all. You're built that way, and it's very good. It's very good. The question is it, the art of living, right, is like when to lean on which side. Right? And, and that's not that science. Not, and is that not what Torah is teaching us? Is that not the balancing? component to to but to to determine this i think that's i hope so I got. yeah well, that's what i got right yeah. i i hope so i hope so yeah. right that it that it's one of the things that helps to, that uh, one of the like equilibriums one of the balancing points that would say oh yeah 
maybe take a look at yourself, maybe this, or, or reflect on all of these themes and concepts that the Torah asks us to bump into over and over and over and over and over, right? Yeah. Right? So, um, yeah. Mm. All right, any last thoughts? No, Chuva's, Chuva's good, you could do it. Little, little tiny habits, right? You take a little step, God takes big steps. So. This was great, thank you. Very, 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 good. very good. Next time Absolutely. I'll bring my other computer. The work computer works. Who knew? Um, okay. Shavuot nice. Tov. Have a great day, everyone. Okay. Bye, Be well. Bye, Carl. Bye. Bye, Pauline. Bye, Robert. Bye, Lynn. Bye, Robert. Bye, Matt. Bye. Thank you again. Bye, Daniel. Bye, Pauline. Thanks. Have a good day.